Is it true, is Oregon really making it illegal to grow your own garden on your own land with water from your own well? People are in an absolute uproar. I mean, this is government overreach. I'm moving out of this state. I'm never moving to that state. Whatever it is, it's really happening out there. Seriously, don't take my word for it. Check it out for yourself. This is what happens in Oregon. Farmers everywhere needed to stop growing food immediately. The state of Oregon has effectively shut down small farms and market gardens on a large scale. Today we're going to talk about the shenanigans going on in Oregon. 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 I even got comments on my own videos about this topic. So as a realtor who gets all sorts of questions from clients who are moving from all over the country, I figured it was time to do my own digging and find out what's really going on here so that you have the truth. So if you're somebody who's in fear of the state trooper showing up at your door because you're growing a couple tomato plants, stay tuned because I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know and share a shocking discovery that I made that anybody who lives in Oregon or is thinking about moving to Oregon is definitely gonna to wanna to know about. So let's start this thing with where the water issues actually start, which is at reservoirs just like the one right behind me all across the state. And this is Immigrant Lake behind me in Southern Oregon, which is a reservoir that stores surface water, okay? And surface water in Oregon is defined as water that includes rivers, streams, lakes, ponds, and reservoirs, okay? And that's different than groundwater, which is transmitted and stored beneath the surface of uh, land like springs and aquifers. I'm gonna tell you why that's all important here in a second, okay? Because under the Oregon law, all water belongs to the public. With some exceptions, cities, irrigators, businesses, and other water users must obtain a permit or a license from the Water Resource Department to use water from any source whether it be underground or from lakes or streams okay so generally speaking landowners with water flowing past through or under their property do not automatically have the right to use that water without authorization from the water resource department that sounds ridiculous doesn't it i can't believe that the state would make these changes it's such overreach and all that stuff when did they make those changes well it turns out back in 1909 all right, so the state of Oregon has had the same type of water control uh, issues that it has right now, or the same type of water control policies as it does right now, back in 1909 is when those started, okay? And that's when the state took over control of the water, which was previously held by the local governments and such, like the counties. So, like I said, landowners with water flowing past, through, or under their property do not automatically have the right to use the water without authorization, which means simply getting a permit. So that's essentially the point where a lot of people stopped their research, okay? They, they went online, they found this little bit of information, and then they went on to, to social media, they went on to YouTube, and they just started spreading rumors like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you're not gonna be able to have a garden in Oregon, the state owns the water, you have to ask for permission to use it, I can't believe this, all this sort of stuff. But the reality is that that's kind of how it's been for quite a long time. All right, and so I'm gonna give you more information right now about how you can actually use your water that's on your property from your well to plant or to water your garden and to do whatever else you wanna do with it, okay? So let's get into that. So the state has said that there are several uses of surface water and groundwater that are exempt from the requirement of obtaining a permit. And so for surface water, which again is rivers, lakes like behind me, streams and those sorts of things, the exempt uses are, number one is a natural spring. And that's defined as the use of a spring that under natural conditions does not form a natural channel and flow off of the property where it originated at any time of the year. So it has to stay on that property, okay? Number two is stock watering, which is the use of water for stock watering, livestock, okay? Watering from a permitted reservoir to a tank or trough and under certain conditions, use of water piped from a surface source to an off-stream livestock watering tank or trough, okay? Third one is rainwater, which is a collection and use of rainwater from an artificial impervious surface like a building's roof. Okay, there are also exemptions for fish protection, fire control, forest management, certain land management practices, and the reuse of water. Those are all exempt uh, from having to obtain a permit. And that's all for the surface water. But what about the groundwater, like the well, that you're probably trying to utilize to water that garden, okay? Well, the exemptions for groundwater are stock watering, like I just described with livestock, okay? The second exemption, and this is the big one, is lawn or non-commercial 
gardening, okay? And that means watering of not more than one half of an acre um, for your residential use, non-commercial use, okay? Uh, and irrigation of a commercial crop requires a water use uh, authorization that is not exempt, okay? So if you have a garden in your backyard that is under a half of an acre, uh, or up to a half of an acre, you do not need a permit from the state to be able to water that garden, okay? And so that's what is, is such a misleading thing that all these people are going online and talking about saying you can't have a garden. No, you can, okay? And you can water your garden. You don't need a permit to water your garden unless it is over a half of an acre or uh, it is being used for commercial use. That's what the state says, okay? And you wanna go check with the state to confirm all that, but that's my understanding of what the state has said in their little pamphlet um, about water use. So that is the big one. Yes, you can water your garden from your well, so long as your garden is for your own use and it is under half an acre. The third exemption is single or group domestic purposes, okay? So that means not exceeding 15,000 gallons per day. The average household uses about 100 gallons of water per day per person, so to get 15,000 gallons a day would be substantial use. So as long as you're using under that for domestic purposes, you're okay. There's also exemptions for single industrial or commercial purposes, uh, downhole heat exchange uses, watering school grounds of 10 acres or less, fire control, and other uh, water reuse uses. So you can have a garden without going to jail, right? Well, maybe not so fast, okay? That's what I was thinking too. Then I found the shocking discovery uh, as I continued to read on. So it turns out there is an important note to be aware of in regards to those exemptions. And it says this, while these water uses do not require a permit, the use is only allowed if the water is used for a beneficial purpose without waste and may be subject to regulation in times of water shortage Okay, that's a big one. Okay, wells supplying water for exempt groundwater uses must comply with Oregon's minimum well construction standards for the construction, maintenance, and abandonment of any well, okay? So, what is beneficial use without waste, and who determines if we are in a time of water shortage? Because those are pretty important things, right? Well, turns out that is the Water Resource Commission who makes that determination, and that is a group of seven citizens of the state of Oregon who were appointed by the governor and each one of them representing a different water district from around the state, okay? Great, so that's who makes that determination, but what about the beneficial purpose language? Well, it turns out that a variety of activities qualify as beneficial uses, including irrigation, municipal uses, manufacturing, and recreation. And since 1987, in-stream flow protection has qualified as a beneficial use, meaning that water rights can be held to, uh, can be held back, sorry, to keep water in the water source itself, okay, for the benefit of the resource and an organism that rely on the water, right? So the holder of a water right can use as much water as needed for their specific beneficial use up to what is stated in the water right. So, What's the verdict? You can or you can't have a garden, okay? Yes, you can have a garden. You can actually have a garden as big as you want, but if you want it to be uh, over a half of an acre, it is going to need to have a water right or an irrigation right that goes along with it. If you wanted a four acre garden, let's say, a lot of properties that are, that are suitable for having a garden that size do have water rights, okay? But can you actually use your own well to water it? See, and that's the other thing. Yes, you can in some cases, and that's what's gonna be stated on your water right water right will say that you have irrigation rights from the irrigation district or you have irrigation rights from a pond or from your well or whatever the case is. So that will be stated in the water right. And here's the good news about water rights. They are pretty common. A lot of properties, like I said, that are, that are suitable for doing that kind of growing do have water rights with them. There are some that don't, and that's where the challenge is gonna be, is in, in getting new water rights for properties if you wanted to do some growing like that. If you wanted a five acre uh, garden and you wanted to do it commercially, which I would hope you would be doing if you had a five acre garden, either that or you really like vegetables. But either way, if you wanted to have a garden of that size, you're gonna need to get water rights, okay? And obtaining new water rights is what's going to be a challenge because Oregon has a bit of a water shortage. Now, I don't know how well you can see behind me, but the lake there is a little bit low. Okay, and so uh, that's one of the things that we are in what the, the state has called a, I believe a significant drought event. 
um, and we've had a shortage of water, okay? And whether that's caused by, you know, who knows what, maybe it's climate change, maybe it's, um, you know, the fact that the state hasn't really done a very good job of monitoring who's using the water, okay? Because you've done, you've had, you know, the, the cannabis industry here in Southern Oregon in particular for a number of years who have just sucked up the water, used millions of gallons without having permits, taken it from, from the, the canals, from the irrigation uh, canals, and all that kind of stuff from the wells, and just sucked up millions of gallons illegally. Um, so maybe it could have been something to do with that. But either way, the fact of the matter is that there's been a lot of wells um, across the state of Oregon that have had issues because of a lack of water. Uh, so, so water rights are going to be a little bit more tightly controlled and I think that's what people have started to see is they see headlines about that type of stuff and then they do a little tiny bit of digging and they say well Oregon owns all the water, you got to get permission to do this or that and then they twist it into meaning that you can't garden, okay? And that's just a complete lie. You can have a garden. So listen, all this information about water rights in Oregon is just the tip of the iceberg, okay? This state is full of little secrets that you probably should know if you were thinking about you know, living in Southern Oregon or moving to anywhere in Oregon. Uh, and I talk about one of those biggest secrets in the video uh, right up here, which is all about why nobody lives in Eastern Oregon, okay? And it is not what you think. So you definitely wanna check that out. And if there's anything I can do to help you learn by or list real estate in Oregon, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm Brian Simmons with eXp Realty. I appreciate you watching this video. Please share it and I'll see you on the next one.